hunting with Dave today. That's his final resting spot under his favorite tree where he sat the most. I spread his ashes under that tree. So I kind of think he's here with me, sitting beside me. Pretty good rub, eh? That wasn't here two days before gun season. A little over, well, about a week ago. A week ago I bow hunted back here. It's interesting. But, uh, yeah, I seen a really big buck back here bow hunting. I'm uh, stalking right now with the rifle. And, uh, I'm gonna get a little scouting in too. I don't know this area really well. I, I want to sneak through some of this stuff with the rifle. See what I see. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments about the rifle. So when I stand hunt, I uh, I like to use my traditional rifles. Uh, my 30 out six, um, seven millimeter, uh, stuff like that. With a big heavy bullet, knock them down as fast as I can. Have precision shots at distances. Now when I drive deer. Or I stalk them. I'm usually at close range and I prefer a very light rifle, semi automatic, a few shells. Uh, I really like the 223. There's not much recoil. You can stay on target and get a couple shots. Literally, there's a lot of hunters in these properties. 
And if you don't knock that deer down fast, if you start tracking it, somebody else is going to get it, they're going to shoot it. Um, I want that first shot in it, and I want some backup ones to knock it down, but I don't want to blow it in half either. Now, we get a lot of comments like uh, uh, the Buck Dave shot. Um, one shot, one kill, you know, take one precision shot. Well, those guys obviously don't do drives because deer don't stand around to give you one standing shot. They take off. Now, what you're not seeing is we're hitting those deer. Dave shot it through the, uh, that buck through the neck, and it was a most likely lethal shot, but it would have probably gotten up into the woods where there was guys hunting above us, and uh, then there's an, a war over the deer. Um, when I shot it, you guys, you know, saw that. Um, some people said, oh, he's spraying lead, he's spraying lead. You know, he shouldn't do that, he shouldn't do this. Well, I hit that deer six times, and that's what dropped it there. And hardly wasted any meat. So I don't see what the issue is. Um, black guns might seem scary because you watch the wrong news stations. But it's just a semi-automatic rifle that's real light, short, and easy to carry through cattails and brush. And that's the truth of the matter. So, take it for what it is. If you don't like black rifles, don't use one. You want to carry a big heavy one? Carry a big heavy one. As you can see, so many people in our group do, some don't. Really, people should just worry about themselves a little more. I'm going to have a little bit of a challenge here filming anything because I'm alone. I put my hat cam on. We'll see what happens. I probably won't even get a shot. It's really hard to sneak up on these things. It's dead, calm, quiet out here. And uh, the wind keeps changing. They said west. Then when I got out here, it was blowing north. I look, it says west-southwest. And I start taking the uh, side of the property that have the wind blowing over. And notice it is just dead wrong. It is blowing <laughs> north right into bedding. So now I'm going to flip around to the back side and come in from there. And the wind will probably switch to what they predicted. So we'll see. But uh, just needed to get out today anyways. So should be fun. I saw a whole bunch of people driving across the street. So they're going to be kicking some deer. Everybody's doing drives today because it's the uh, Friday after Thanksgiving. It's kind of traditional around here. Don't know why, but it is. So there should be deer up and running and moving all over the place. I don't hear any shots yet, though. So I'm pretty remote right now. I'm hitting little patches of snow, and there's no boot prints back here, so whatever, or hunter sign. But just over there is private land that comes up against the backside of this public. And there are some fresh pop-up blinds and stands over there. I'm hearing that drive starting to shoot now. But I'm running into a whole bunch of big buck signs. I did hear one deer hop up in front of me and take off, but it didn't run. It just kind of hopped ahead of me. And I ran into some fresh pea that wasn't even frozen yet on the trail. But I'm just one tree after another back here. All these have fresh rubs on them and historical rubs. I mean, everywhere you look, I mean, here's a branch broken from a scrape. There's an older rub. There's a fresher rub. There's a rub that's hit this year and last year. And it's like this this whole way. And this is just kind of a narrow section between a lot of grass. So there's a good chance he's in here somewhere if we didn't already kick him. I'm just trying to go real slow, one step at a time. And see what happens. Yesterday it was about 50 degrees and almost all the snow melted. Now there's fresh broken tracks all over in here, which means it had to be last night or this morning. And there's one set trotting this way, so it's one I probably kicked up. But I only heard one get up. We're starting to get into a lot better looking terrain, but getting close to deer and this stuff would be pretty difficult. We'll see. At least I'm learning the area. I'm already seeing some trees that set up in bow hunting. 
really one of the best things about this still hunting through these uh, suspected big buck areas is that I find some great bow hunting spots. There's deer sign back here like crazy and no hunter sign. But uh, I believe they're betting in this stuff right here. And how do you even get a shot? I can only see 10 yards. If they bust through and they go the other way, I have no shot. So it's really a game of sneaking and hoping you see them on their feet. But man, the trails and stuff going in and out of that stuff is crazy. And not one boot print. Just hope I catch one on his feet. Probably won't happen, but I'm finding some good spots. I'm finding little open spots on the ends of these bedding areas where I could set up next year and hunt with a bow. thing I really like to do is plan my approach. So I'm constantly looking ahead at what's the best path of travel without making noise. Going slow is one thing, but getting yourself into a tangle is another. So I'm just trying to look for paths ahead. You know, I'm just following the deer trail. Deer will go through some stuff I can't go through quiet. They could just go around. Sometimes you wonder if they do that on purpose. Because I'm right up against deer bedding, for sure. I'm probably even walking by some that aren't jumping. But no use in jumping them if I can't kill them. Just try to catch one on his feet. So while I'm creeping ahead, I'm also looking for where I think a big buck would be. He ain't going to be in this stuff because literally, even though that looks thick and it is thick, it's kind of open. You get in there, you can see a ways. This grass, even though it's kind of thick, doesn't have enough cover for it, for a big buck. Maybe a doe or something. When I look up ahead, I see these high reeds and those trees right in the reeds, right along a creek. I'd be willing to bet they're betting right on the edge of the creek there. And that... Even if we don't see any deer, we're going to run into some big buck beds right there. And uh, I've never been out here before, but I'm willing to bet on it, just looking at that terrain. And having looked at so many bedding areas, you can kind of read this stuff from a distance after a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm on a crosswind. I'm going to sneak in there real slow, and hopefully I can get close enough for a shot if there is one there. See, there's a nice trail going into the bedding right here. It's just a matter of being quiet and not getting seen. And the deer being there, of course. Well, I'm in the trees. And by the looks of the rubs in here, I would say it was getting used early season. But looking at the cover, it's a lot more open than I thought it was from back there. I mean, it's just... I'm sure in early season when these uh, buckthorn trees are covered in green, there's probably good beds. As a matter of fact, you can see the dents in the ground where they've been bedding for years. As a matter of fact, look at the, the, the old rub on this tree from a couple years ago. That historical rub is huge. Trail there going to a bed underneath that tree, but it's just a lot of rubs in there. Just a little too open right now. I was walking along a ditch over there and some guys approached me from the private land, recognized me and asked me if I wanted to participate in their drive. And they came out here in the public marsh and pushed forward and I covered the back door.
nice. So while I was still hunting over there, um, along this uh, tree line over here, I ran into uh, Corey. I know Corey. him from uh, online, <laughs> and he was doing some drives, and he invited me along. And you know the guy's hardcore when he's uh, <laughs> in muck up to here, and water and muck up to here, right? <laughs> Look, it's even on his beard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I uh, got one down, and uh, anybody else see anything? No, no, it sounded like everything came out this way. So. Yeah, if you guys do this again, you should drive it this way. Right. Everything wanted to go in that swamp. Right. Yeah. Lesson learned, I guess. Yeah, because I saw six. <laughs> oh, okay. Six total, yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Just happy someone got one. <laughs> Made it all worth it. <laughs> I tripped and fell back there and broke a knob right off the side of my scope. Great. This type of hunting is tough on equipment. <laughs> so Friday when hunting, I fell down and landed on my gun and broke off the adjustment knob for the scope. I want to see if it's still on. So I got that uh, bag down there. I'm going to aim at the cat's head. Let's see if I can hit it. Holy cow, not a hole in it anywhere. <laughs> Who knows where I hit? Yeah, that scope is of no use. And I shot from the truck. There's the target. So I shot like that. Way over here. There's an impact, and there's an impact, and there's an impact. So it's uh, <laughs> like three feet to the right. And... Uh, Probably about 10 inches low. <laughs> um, we're going to drive this, there's a pole here first, and then we're going to come back out, go around and drive this section over here. That section I really like. This section usually produces some deer too, it's like 50 50 usually. Um, sometimes a ton of them fly out of it, sometimes none. Um, but we can cover this with four guys. Um, anybody that wants to sit, Jeff. Jeff has a hard time in the cattails. Uh, um, anybody else? Cam's first deer hunt, he might want to take a yeah, set. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll sit up on the hill with the camera, and uh, uh, you can come with me. Jeff, you know this spot, right? Over here? Yeah. yeah. So if you want to take the spot over there and put something <coughs> right here. You kind of forget how reliant you are on a phone. How oh, we never used to need one. I got out here, and none of these guys have driven this before. And I get my, I'm going to get my phone out to show them on a map where to go and my phone's not in my pocket and then, then you realize how much easier hunting has gotten since we've gotten phones because now it's kind of hoping they understand how to get through there um, I showed uh, Eric on his phone what to do and I have him leading that crew but as far as going through those cattails if I see him doing something or whatever I can't message him to change course or to get in line, or to do other things. So the phone has really become kind of critical, but we'll see how they do. Um, I know they, they're all big boys and they know how to hunt, so. We've got a uh, bowl out here, a bowl that comes around like this of cattails, with uh, water on that end, water on this end over here, kind of forcing the deer have to come out this way. Um, there's only been once or twice a deer backdoored here, not very often. We've got uh, Jason right there, and uh, another guy, you know, 75 yards from him in the thick cover, if they take thick. And we got uh, another young man over here, and Jeff over there. And if any deer comes through here, it should not have a very good survival rate. So, see what happens. Getting them on film is kind of tough because they usually come up flying 90 miles an hour, but I'll try.
I took the old trusty 30 out six pump 760. This is usually my tree stand gun. Reason being, in a tree stand, I take a precision one shot at a standing deer. And when you're doing drives, deer are usually moving, and you need several shots, and you don't want them to get far. Because the stuff we're driving on this public land, generally, those deer, if they get out of sight, somebody else claims them. It happens quite often. So what we try to do is knock them down before they get out of sight. Um, and uh, the AR has no recoil. You can stay on them. Um, the last last time we did, um, when uh, Dave shot that buck through the neck, when it came by me, I put six rounds in it before it stopped. If it made it into that woods, it would have probably been gone. So uh, it was hit seven times. They keep running. I don't know what people don't get about that, is that when you shoot a deer, it doesn't die instantly, even if you heart shot it. That second deer I shot, the, the doe that came running out, that took two shots right here. The second one crumbled it, but both were lethal. You know, you, you hit them a few times. So on the AR, I'm using ballistic bullets that expand real well, and uh, it knocks them down pretty fast, actually. Not a lot different than the 30 odd six. But on these drives, I've had several deer that you hit them, hit them good, and even with the heavy calibers, because I used to always use the 30 odd six. You hit them with the 30-odd six two, three times, and they run off into the woods, and there's some problems with it. There's one real giant eight-pointer back in the days when we used to have to use 12-gauge on that exact same drive. That buck came underneath me, and I hit him three times with solid copper sabots out of a 12-gauge, and that thing ran 200 yards up into the woods, and another group of drivers that was driving the woods ran right over and tried to claim it. So, is what it is. I don't know if you heard that, but I just heard my phone ding. <laughs> so honest to God, somewhere's on me is my phone. <laughs> what the hell was that? Here it is, in the side bottom pocket. Jeez. Well, that's good. Gunshots, here they come. Come on. <laughs> Where you at? Maybe they got it. I can see orange in there. No deer ran up yet. They probably tried back door and there's a lot of scrapes and stuff in here. There's one right there. There's a couple more over there. So there's signs of bucks in here. And the scrapes aren't that old. Maybe they got a buck. What? Oh, Why, does the ears? Inside the ears. Oh, okay. It was 10 yards away from me. I was about to shoot it and he got up and took off. Didn't want to. Yeah, Tyler jumped in. Me and the guy with the beard. Ah, nice. Went right down the line of everybody, basically. There's a, a lot of fresh tracks skirting that island. Mm -hmm. I think that we might push into the next drive really well here. Yep. That big old worn down bed in there, right where it was. There's cool. Like, there's like four or five along the edge of the river. There's more. More what? Deer. <laughs> Did you guys, you guys pick up more than that? Well, there's a lot of fresh tracks coming. Up. Oh yeah, I told you I was standing on that that hillside at 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday and watched deer walking in between these two islands. We picked up a friend too. Hey. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was going to work to the island and we were like, all right, we don't want to shoot at you. That's the guy I saw when we were doing. Ah, that. okay. Yeah. We turned right. on him. He was taking a good morning nap. All right. <laughs> so yeah, we got to go get that thing drug out. Butt cake. All right. So uh, where was he hit? Should have been right there. <laughs> right in the chest, huh? Yeah, I was, I was right on the other side of this clearing. Okay. It's a big ass body. And he was just standing here and looking at me, and the way it went. So he just stopped. He just stopped. It. That is a good sized body on that yeah, thing. Oh yeah. Looks like a two year old man. That's what I thought. That's yeah. what I thought. I think yeah, he's definitely a two year old body. Not a huge rack. You know, sometimes you get two year olds that are 150, yeah, and right. sometimes you get two year olds like this.
Foster was right there. Yeah, and he was bedded. I mean, yeah, he I must have been. Saw the tree I was you there. kicked them, yeah. kicked them up, Tyler. And you from here to the tree away. And you kind of expected something to be there because yeah, you were seeing mud the and everything. Mud up on the yep. yep. And it looked really fresh. I was like, oh, there might be something in here. And with it raining today, that mud had to be yeah. fresh. So, literally ten steps, and all of a sudden I looked up, and there he was. He was just staring at me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that could have been a pretty interesting wreck. The way this animal Maybe. didn't hardly go into anything. Mm -hmm. But that's a pretty big body deer for yeah. little racks. It's that's a right. two-year-old. Two yeah, yeah. Let's see the heart. Yep. that she was going down the highway. There's a giant buck laying in the middle of the road that's bigger than anything you ever shot. She oh, said, yeah. you want to come get it? I'm like, I'm in the middle of a drive. Oh, she left it there. I'm like, it ain't going to last. She goes, oh, just head over this way. I'm like, it ain't going to be there when we get there. Probably not. You should have at least dragged it off. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Carol. <laughs> you should be able to load that in your charger. Tell <laughs> her to go home yeah. and get the hearse. Yeah. Yeah. Put on your big girl pants. Yeah. Yeah. Drag it in the ditch. Yeah. <laughs> I just went down and checked the river. It's uh, extra wide now because of the flooding. And it really looks deep. I took a stick, I couldn't find the bottom. There's a tree going across about this big around. <laughs> and with a stick, um, I think you can get across. And it was there last the year. Ice. Oh, my right, message to you. So, so it, I want Jeff to drive you, this. You're right, you're right. <laughs> and uh, Jeff, you do this, lead the guys across the log. I'll, I'll do the backstroke. I think you can get across that, no sure. problem. All right, we're on our second drive of the day. Um, still raining out we're all a little bit soaked we have uh corey and will with us today us three will be the shooters um we have dan and jason and the whole gang of guys tyler um all working their way out of the cattails down this way and they're gonna push this whole section straight out this way we're gonna have three guys posted one guy actually where i'm standing here We'll have a guy on this, this transition along the cattails up ahead and another guy further back yet on a river where some of the big stuff likes to slip out. So uh, Jeff will be posted up where you see the, uh, the birch trees. And then, uh, so actually we'll have four shooters plus all the guys in the cattails. So we have a good little army of guys today. So, um, and then uh, Jake, We'll actually be sitting in a tree with a stand. I'm not sure exactly where he's posted, but I'm sure somewhere that should produce. So um, we'll give this one a go. All right, follow me. I'm covering back door here. We got guys way down here standing. We got Eric spreading that way. There's Eric. We got a stander up on that hill. Okay, guy coming to push right over here. Yep, yep. Here we go. Scope is iced up. Cam, a doe just kicked up to the left of those trees. She stopped. Yeah, she stopped. My scope iced over. I couldn't find her in the scope. Yeah, sit about 40 yards to the left of those trees. 40 yards to the left of the furthest out tree.
All right. Stopped in that brush. yelling behind you Ooh, they're pushing deer She might have just went down. Hold on, hold on. Just wait. You be ready. She's still breathing? Maybe. I'm gonna kick her. Get ready. Nah, she's, she's done. done. It's done. She's I thought, dead. I thought the eyes were open. The way she was sitting, yeah, it, it looks just... like it's ready to book. Yeah. <laughs> Good shot. Looks like it's a well, it's a little back, but. <sighs> is, it, is it right down here? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. It's yep. probably the exit. Yeah, she uh, she looks like she was gonna get up and just book it. All right, Jacob, <laughs> come drag this thing. <laughs> Where's the new guy? Actually, Jacob, just come and throw it over your shoulders. Come on. I will. <laughs> oh God, that's not YouTube friendly. We'll keep them on. Demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> Driver's gonna go in right where you're at. One of the river push, so you good. your buddy, one of the two. Yeah, Cam, do you want to go for one? Sure. All right, sounds good. Let's do that. I'd, I'd be quiet about trying to get the water. I have, we've never driven it. So I don't even I'll know if there's any deer in there. I just know that I got a camera over here and it's, just, it's got big bucks on it all day long. So, Dan, you want this one straight in front of us or do you want one to the right more? You pick whatever one you want. I like that straight one there. Straight one there. Because that's got some nice open stuff, right? Let's do it. You want me to go there right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. Uh, one of you guys is going to push? Yep, I will. You can just uh, stay at the tree or wherever. Um, 
All right, so uh, you need to sit. I don't need to. I need to. Um, you have to. So you want to sit then? I'll sit. Cart me out. If nobody else wants to. I'll sit. Okay. Care for me. So no no, we got enough drivers. We can help you guys sit. So, um, so we got uh, sitters come over here. You, you, you. You haven't sat at all, right? Well, no. I'm not you have one more. Anybody else? Uh, I'll see it, I guess. Okay. All right. So then what I want you guys to do is uh, look at your phone. You just want to sit? Okay. Go in along here. In between here, the river will turn and go that way. And it comes up close to that point over there. I'm going to get on that point where the camera is. Yep. Yep. And then you guys just push this this way. There's a good chance as soon as you go in, I like jump as a wind. Here. I mean, you've never done this before. Right? I mean, when you do these new ones, they're either a dud or some giant comes out all the time. Yeah. 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 But the way the wind's going, as soon as you guys go in, you can jump. Yeah. So you got to wait till we're set. And uh, what I'll do is I'll call you, and I'll tell you when. Study it on your phone. I think you can go in right along the river. Spread mm -hmm. out and try to keep a straight line towards the point over there. She's kind of taking a look at it. I think you can cover those pretty good. Okay. Alright, go. Alright. Okay, uh, drive a piece we never drove before. A little patch of cattails way out that uh, I was watching a nice 10 pointer kind of living here. All fall. Um, so we're hoping he's in here. I don't know if he is or not. There's a little patch. Which should be easy to drive. We'll be able to see if there's any beds in there or whatever. I'm on a finger. And uh, Tyler is over here. We got a guy over here, a guy over there, a guy over there, a guy over there. They're going in right there. They're going in upwind. So I'm expecting if something comes in, is in there, it might come right away. So, no idea. Getting after here. guys going? Holy cow. We got uh, six drivers. We got a river that goes around and then comes over beside me here. And uh, they're going to wedge this patch. Hopefully they don't cross the river, but I don't think they will. The deer, I mean. So let's see what happens. This rain is relentless. That's the drivers. So you're gonna walk way out there and come back through. We got guys in the hill over here. Guys over in stands over here. See some deer. We got Dan right there. Quite a ways off. He's sitting the outer edge of our sanders here. We got guys here starting to push, and we've got. Stander here. If you guys can see him, we got too much glare in the camera right now. We've got more guys up on this hill, hill line over here. They're coming through over there just now. I looked that way for a second, turned around, and there's a pretty good deer. I couldn't see if it had a rack, but it was pretty big. Walked across the dike about 80 yards from me. I caught it just as it was walking into the other side. Just as I got the crosshairs on it. But man, if I'd have been looking in that direction, I'd have probably had it if it was a shooter. I don't know, it's a pretty big animal. Let's see if they put anything else up. I almost went and stood down there. Figured I could shift as they moved down. I probably should have. Shots from across the road behind me. So the one that just slipped by us, I heard get shot behind me. <laughs> so the direction it went, there's just two gunshots.
stand shooting. I don't see the deer. I think that was Dan. Your shot's being fired in the drive. So yelling deer. I don't see it. I hear it. Guys are getting pretty close to Dan now. there, Dan and another guy to his right, all coming in on him, one guy down this way further, Port center screen right now, pushing in, looks like they're all shifting towards Dan here. So Eric thinks he hit that deer and it ran over here by this tree and they're going to look a little bit because it never came out. It never came past Alec, and it never came past me. Looks like he's got hair. Yeah, it looks like he shot hair off of it. Well, when she came out of the cattails, she spotted me right away and spun around and I nailed her. She didn't get in very far. You know, why is it that we always let Dan go first? Dan dances like a minute for us. No, D Dan is, uh, his unofficial nickname should be the Icebreaker. Yeah. He breaks the ice and we, yeah. uh, we go in. There's her, there's her tail. Looks like there's a, a divot where her heart used to be. Yeah. I can do this without ending up at the bottom of the lake. I mean, to hold your gun or? Uh, I think I got it. Oh, she's got quite the hole in her, right? Eh? <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna film it. You might not use the footage, but. 
Holy moly. <laughs> yeah, she didn't go very far with that, did she? No. The thing is, when I shot her, she just looked at me too and just kept trotting like nothing happened. Yeah, that's that's a, about a, that's about as much carnage as I think I I've knew, ever seen. I knew her heart was blown out when I saw that blood spray. Yeah. I mean, it's... Wow. That with even lungs or nothing, you know. That was, that, that like took out breastbone everything. Yeah, that deer doesn't need to be gutted, we just need to shake it up so <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the reason I like the 223 too. I mean, you really do some damage with this gun. Yeah, most people uh, will poo-poo it, but uh, that's that's w literally what hit it, right? With Eric, Eric. That... Oh, no, that's probably my 30 out Oh, all right. I don't know where his, uh, his hit it. Well, actually he hit it down low because he had white hair. Yep, yep. exactly. So. Hard to say who did what, but he did have a big patch of hair. Correct, correct. Yeah, we'll have to do some uh, digging through. <laughs> forensic, and and, forensic know. evidence, yeah. forensic analysis. Got some more meat. <laughs> My breezer is pretty topped off, but I'll take it. I'm well, sure, cool. Uh, I'm sure this one will be just like butter all the way through. <laughs> the bottom line is you work your butt off here, and the reward is the whole the big deal of it and it's the challenge of getting put in the right spots finding the tracks trails um, and just pushing them out for other guys as well as other guys working together to help me get one um, but overall it's uh, it's the challenge it's the reward um, it's hard work You're gonna get gonna get sore gonna get bruised definitely gonna get wet uh, but it's just what we do. It's how we're wired, and not everybody's wired this way, for sure. Um, I guess you got to be a little bit different breed. Some guys just don't like it and don't come back. My oldest son, for one, he did it a couple of years, and it's just not for him. Um, for him, it's more of a the unknown of what's below you. Uh, for other guys, it's they don't want to get wet. Um, they don't want to sweat. <laughs> You know, it's uh, there's nothing about this is that's easy, and uh, but it's rewarding when you when you get one, you've earned it for sure, and uh, you know you've earned it. You go home at night, there's bruises, scrapes, cold, wet, <laughs> smells, <laughs> you name it, you got it coming out of the swamp here. So, but it's a good time. And uh, probably the biggest thing for me is just the camaraderie we build because we're all suffering and miserable the same way. I really enjoy getting together with all the guys. And, um, you know, we're not shooting the biggest stuff on every drive we do, but it's just all about getting together with the guys and uh, just having a good time. That's what it's really about. It's tradition. Um, I personally enjoy it because I, I actually don't have any family that hunts. Um, so I'm kind of a self-taught hunter and uh, I got myself involved with it and it's it's great to meet a group of guys that are like-minded and um, get out in the woods together and uh, spend some time 